It has stock thock. Cooking video? Fine, I get it. You want me to look at the Epo Maker TH80. But there's just one problem, and it's... Which one do I look at? There's three keyboards, they all have the same name, I'm very confused, please help me, is what I think you would say. Well, don't worry, because howdy hey, I'm here to save the day. I tried the Epo Maker TH80, so you don't have to. But it's even more important than that. With claims like it's the thockiest keyboard people have ever tried, and it's an incredible budget keyboard, I was already pretty skeptical. And then I thought, what if I put sand in it? Don't worry, that'll make sense in a minute. But what's even more confusing is all of these keyboards are the same price. Well, kind of, and we'll talk about that. So I got EpoMaker to send me all three of their keyboards, and what they didn't send me was a script for this video. So in this video, I'll be putting all three keyboards to the test to determine which is the best for you if any at all. Huh. Now, full disclosure, EpoMaker is the sponsor of this channel, but as you'll see later in this video, they did not review my video or tell me what to say. That's why I really like working with them. Now, this story is a little bit confusing because at first I thought it would be really cut and dry. There's the EpoMaker TH80, the Pro is probably the best, but then why is there an X and why is there an SE? And then even more confusingly, the price is the same on their website for all three of these keyboards. So similar to Mr. Beast trapped in a coffin for a week, I had to get to the bottom of this. And no, I will not be peeing in a bottle. Now, at first, I thought I would start with the TH80 Pro, because obviously this is going to be the best one, and then I can write off the other two boards, and then why is this video so long? No. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this unboxing, because I won't go in depth for the other ones. First, you get a braided cable, then you get three switches, and the switches are going to be different in each keyboard, so I'll go into detail when that's relevant. These are the flamingos. Also, the TH80 Pro does come with a couple different keycap options, like Mac modifiers and weird novelties as well as a keycap and switch puller so that if this is your first keyboard, it's easy to take it apart. Now, here's where things start to get a bit confusing. Remember how I said all these keyboards are the same price? Well, they are on EpoMaker's website. However, they're also like $10 cheaper on Amazon, and I'll have them linked below for both. The TH80 Pro comes in at $89.99, which could either be overpriced or really cheap, depending on how good it is. Now, similar to how my friends describe me, the first impressions with this are pretty nice, but... Let's not get to the other part that they said. The keycaps are a really pleasing color scheme. The big centered legends could definitely be a turnoff for some people. And speaking of turn-ons, we've got knobs. British viewers, look away. Look away, British viewers. No. Now this knob is used for volume. And I imagine all of the other knobs are going to be able to be used for volume as well right? That's not foreshadowing or anything, right? Similar to my face in 50 years, the case is unapologetically plastic, and they mention a gasket mount on the listing, but I'm not really seeing any gasket performance here. If you're new to keyboards, a really simplified explanation is that it dampens your keyboard and gives it a little bit of flex. So the dampening might be here, but the flex sure isn't. But after flipping the board around, we get to see what are the first of many problems. Do you guys see any screws? Do you see any screws on the back of this thing? We'll get back to that. As a flippy feet enjoyer, these are definitely a welcome touch, and there's two stage flippy feet, so you can adjust the angle two different ways. There's also a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now you can use this board with Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz or wired, and it does have a pretty beefy battery capacity and Epic Gamer RGB. Now at this point of the build, I was thinking, wow, you guys were right. This is really a unique keyboard, and it's pretty decent for the price. So then why is this video so long again? Well, let's start by talking about the modability. If you remove the keycaps with the included keycap puller, you see the switches. These are the EpoMaker Flamingo switches. Now, all three of these boards are hot swappable, meaning that you can remove the switches without needing to solder or desolder. This board doesn't feature PE foam on the PCB, however, it does feature south-facing LEDs, which is a great touch, and all of the other boards are going to have that, right? Right? Now, EpoMaker offers these boards with a lot of different switch options, which honestly I think makes it really confusing. These Flamingo switches are what I would consider good two years ago. Now, these are a linear switch, and this is probably the most relevant to you if you're looking at buying these keyboards. Now, they're relatively smooth and factory lubed, but they aren't really up to the standard that I would expect nowadays, which is not what she said. Now, you're probably wondering, what about the other switch options, Hippio? And don't worry, I'll talk about those later. As far as the keycaps go, I talked about them a little bit before, but they're pleasantly thick die sub PVT keycaps. Now, their profile is a little bit weird, so it's kind of a love it or hate it type of thing. And with Amazon offering free returns within 30 days, it might be worth giving this a shot just to see if you like this type of profile. 
But wait, do not buy anything yet. Because you remember how I said earlier that I was gonna start with the best keyboard? Well, the sound and feel of this one is actually the worst. So leave a comment of what you think, but that's not thawky, right? Now, it's not exactly bad, but it's also not fantastic, and I've definitely heard a lot better for 89 bucks. So already, I'm a little bit disappointed. But you know, like my mom always says, if at first your keyboard sucks, then try again? Well, hold on. Let's not actually look at the SE right now. Let's look at that later. Let's look at something a little bit more screened. Now this keyboard is very confusing, and honestly I don't think it should be called the EpoMaker TH80 because it's essentially a totally different board. However, for some of you, that could be a good thing. Just like Nola eating the box's cardboard. Yum yum. Now, like the other TH80, it is lightweight, and it is unapologetically plastic again. Sorry, let me just move Nola out of the way real fast. Except, the first thing I notice is that these keycaps are weirdly gamery. I know it's completely subjective, but I think the font on these is absolutely That's disgusting. So which is a real shame, because the flat profile and really nice pastel colors could be great for some people. But the font choice is just weird. Like, this is apparently a K, and I thought it was a V or something weird. I don't know. They are decent quality die sub keycaps, but I don't want to talk about the keycaps. I want to talk about the keyboard. Now, all of these keyboards have some subtle software differences that I really recommend you look at the product page to get clarification on because it would be like a literal five minute section of this video if I talk about software capabilities and only two of you would watch it. But this board does have Epic Gamer RGB and the same flippy feet, although it hides the dongle for 2.4 gigahertz for some reason. However, I'm sensing a trend here that all of these keyboards are gonna be really hard to disassemble. You might have noticed that this board has a bigger knob. Now, British viewers, before you get too excited, it can't be used for volume. What? Now, it can be used to adjust settings on the screen, which is really nice. Granted, the screen has a really weird RGB shift to it permanently. But to me, I think the knob and screen just kind of make this board feel a little bit cheaper, like it's a toy. And the rounded out edges really don't help here. However, to Epo Maker's credit, I will say that the gasket performance still sucks. See, you thought I was going to say something positive there. I, <laughs> I pulled a fast one on you. Now, ultimately, this keyboard still is a full package. Like, you get the keycaps, you get the switches, but let's talk about the switches. Now, this part is relevant no matter which of these keyboards you seem interested in, because these are the Gateron Pro Yellows. Now, there's been quite a few Gateron Pro Yellows, and I think these are the second version, not the third. The third version is incredibly thocky and incredibly smooth, and these are like almost there. Now they are definitely an improvement over the Flamingo switches in my opinion, just based on feel and sound. So I do recommend you go with the Gateron Pro Yellows over the Flamingos if that's something you're debating. Now one thing I did notice is that this board is quite a lot deeper than its counterpart, the normal TH80 Pro. But that sounds weird saying. So it's definitely closer to the Thok, but then I wish it just had these keycaps and switches in the TH80 Pro and didn't mess around with any of the other weird features. Also, most notably, this keyboard is $10 more than the others on Amazon, where the others are on a discount. So even though it sounds better, it's a hard pass for me. Now at this point, I got disheartened and confused. People had told me that this board was thawky and incredible and budget friendly, so I was down to my last hope. And that's the TH80 SE. The main difference in the unboxing here is that it comes with a black spacebar, three different switches, and a black cable. Now at first I thought, okay, it's just a recolored version of the EpoMaker TH80. But then I quickly learned that it's an entirely different keyboard. Which again, guys, just call this a different model or something. It's way too confusing. Now already, I much prefer the fact that it has a Mac and Windows switch, the dongle on the back of the keyboard for easy access, and the board does just look a little bit more substantial than the other two keyboards. Like, they kind of feel like they're going to fall apart. However, ding, 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 it's still plastic, and it's still got no screws on the bottom. So the modability for all of these boards is pretty bad. However, this one is a little bit better, and I'll talk about that later. It also has the same flippy feet, which is great. It's got a little switch on the bottom to switch modes, which is also really nice because then you don't have to fiddle with macros or anything. And you're probably wondering, Hippio, what about the software for all of these keyboards? Well, you can check out my previous videos on EpoMaker keyboards for my thoughts on the software. It's, uh, okay. 
I don't recommend these boards if you're someone that likes to fiddle with software and customize every key map and everything because it's just a little bit too clunky. Just like the gasket performance that's still unexistent. However, the knob is actually much nicer on this one, which is kind of interesting. Because confusingly, this board also comes in at $89.99, so it's the same price as the TH80 Pro. However, there's a few crucial differences here that I think makes this board a way better option than the other, and also maybe one bad part. Hmm. Now, the fact that this board is plastic is both a pro and a con. There are boards that are cheaper, like the Womier SK71, that is full aluminum for a similar price. However, the pro is that this board does end up sounding a little bit deeper. And part of that is these switches. These are the Bluebird switches, and if you like linear switches, these are definitely the best option of any of the others. Being fully palmed, they've got my personal sound profile, and they also are the best factory lubed, but wait, what the hell is going on here? What? You know how the other two boards had south-facing LEDs, which was great? What the- ah! Why? Why would you do this? North-facing LEDs? Now, this is a bit of an old school gripe, and old Hippiotech viewers will definitely know what I'm talking about. North facing LEDs generally have no issue in a keyboard. However, if you want to use cherry profile keycaps and older style switches that don't have long pulls, then you'll end up with some pretty bad interference in the middle row of your keyboard. Now, this keyboard doesn't have any interference because the switches are actually compatible. However, if you did want to mod this thing, then that would be a huge issue. Now between the Pro and the SE, I like the shape of the SE a lot more. It looks like a custom keyboard, which I know that's like a weird thing to describe, but it just feels more premium despite them being the same exact price. However, I'm sorry European gang, the SE doesn't come with an ISO option and only the Pro does, which is pretty lame. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Hippio, but what if you mod any of these keyboards? Won't that make them sound thockier and better? Well, yes, let me use my incredibly strong fingers to pry this keyboard apart because there's no screws, which honestly is pretty risky because you could snap this plastic, and this reveals the top housing, which they use a very interesting like silicone gasket structure, but it's like almost tucked into the top case. This is probably why we're getting no gasket performance because there's actually a surprising lack of foam in this board. Now there's a layer of rubber in between the plate and PCB, but in the case itself, it's just this thin sheet of foam. So this gave me the idea of tape modding it really fast. I just put three layers of painter's tape on the back of this thing and pressed it down. And then with how hollow the case seems, I think I can get away with putting kinetic sand in there. Now I know it's incredibly unhinged to put sand in your keyboard, especially around a battery. So I don't necessarily recommend this. I recommend you use foam. However, it is really satisfying. Like, look at this. My hope with this is that the kinetic sand is gonna fill in every little space in the keyboard and help dampen it quite a lot. Also, I shouldn't have to say this, but please don't use normal sand as well. It's rough and coarse and gets everywhere. Now, if you're paying attention at home, those mods cost about 10 bucks and took about 10 to 15 minutes, which is really, really easy. After pressing the keyboard together, I also needed to mod the spacebar. I filled it with a tiny bit of kill mat using some magic, and no, I won't kill you if your name is Matt. And I'll show you how that sounds in a minute, but you're probably wondering, at the end of this, Hippio, you tried three keyboards. Which one did you prefer? Well, interestingly, post-edit, I did find that there's a regular version of the TH80, which is basically the Pro, but with worse software and worse switch options. However, it starts at 60 bucks, which makes it a lot cheaper. So if you're on a crazy budget, you could get the TH80 regular and mod it out later when you have more of a budget. However, when it comes down to it, the TH80 SE is the best of these three. The north facing LEDs is really cringe, but the overall case construction and switches do make it the most appealing option. However, I do think there are some other boards that offer more of a value. Like these are by no means bad options, but something like the Keychron V1 when it's on sale is only 69 bucks for basically the same keyboard with potentially better software. However, these boards are available on Amazon, which is a plus for a lot of people, but ultimately I'd like to know what you think. So I'm gonna leave you with a sound test of the before and after of the SE, and I want you to do a sound test of your own in the comments. Bye.